Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 18 to 26. It's the Gospel for Monday of the 14th week of Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away, the girl is not dead but sleeping, and they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose, and news of this spread throughout all that land. That's from Matthew chapter 9, verse 18 to 26. What does this suggest to us? It suggests Christ's love. You know, I wonder how many of us appreciate the advantage of having the inspired gospel text constantly at hand. It was not so in the first few decades of the infant church. It is generally agreed that the Gospels were written only some decades after the resurrection and ascension of our Lord. Prior to their writing, the faithful were nourished by the preaching and developing tradition of the infant church. They did not have the full formal text of the New Testament, only certain portions of it depending on where they were and when they lived at that time. This, of course, this is, of course, one reason why it is incorrect to think that the revelation of Christ comes to us only in the New Testament-inspired text, Sola Scriptura. The New Testament scriptures, meaning the Gospels, Acts of the Apostles, the Letters and the Book of Revelation, came to the faithful over some decades and even then, the canon of the scriptures was only decided by the church long after. So then, there was a time in the very early history of the church when the faithful did not have constantly at hand much of the inspired text of the New Testament, and in particular, much of the Gospels. Indeed, there was a time when there was none of it. In its place, though, they had a most privileged access to the church's tradition as it was being established by the twelve and those who were witnesses of the Lord. We have the church's spirit guided, the, church, the church's tradition guided by the spirit. And we also have the precious gift of the New Testament scriptures and in particular the inspired text of the Gospels. That is what we have. If we remain immersed in the church's tradition, and prayerfully and assiduously read the scriptures, daily meditating on the Gospels, we shall be in a privileged position to know Christ and his saving revelation. Let us then cherish a frequent and daily reading of the Gospels, coming to know and love the person of Jesus. So, let us turn to today's Gospel passage that I read with a view to contemplating the person of Christ. Consider our Lord's response to the official who comes to him with a request that he come and raise up his daughter from the dead. Our Lord at this point in his public ministry is pressed on all sides by requests for help and healing. He does not simply send the official off with a word assuring him that the girl will live, but immediately rises to follow him. He is gracious and constantly in a posture of service for the individual who is in need. Matthew adds the detail that his disciples followed him, 
reminding the reader that being a disciple means following in the footsteps of Jesus, who lives for the sake of others. On his way, with the crowd pressing around, a woman with a serious health complaint comes up to Jesus and touches his cloak, sure that the touch would bring her healing. Again, our Lord turns to her as an individual and gives her his personal attention, assuring her that her faith has saved her. He arrives at the house and takes the girl by the hand. There is this very personal contact. The girl herself is physically touched by the Lord and raised to life. Christ does not just deal with humanity in general, with the masses. He deals with individual persons. Each individual has a high dignity. When immersed in the crowds, he has constant thought for the individual. All this is to say that Jesus loves not just mankind, but he loves me. As St. Paul writes, Christ loved me and gave himself up for me. If we are ever to appreciate this, we must meditate on it, and especially with the inspired gospel text in our hand. That is why the gift of the inspired gospels is such a boon, such a gift for the serious Christian, the one who wishes to receive Christ into his life. Let us take up the gospel every day and place ourselves in the presence of the risen living Jesus, whose regard for us is constantly portrayed in the gospel accounts. Jesus loves me and gave himself for me. That is what each of us can say with St. Paul. The Christian religion places the person of Christ at the centre of life. It involves coming to know, love and serve him with all our heart. If we are to do this, we must come to know him. The daily and prayerful reading of the Gospels are a most privileged means of arriving at this personal knowledge of Jesus. Let us make this a linchpin of our Christian life.